Hello everyone. I want to show you how to trace the execution of Python programs that have functions in them. And you don't have to do it exactly this way, but this can be a helpful framework for um, understanding and predicting what Python programs are doing that contain functions. So over here I've got um, kind of a, a template set up. And uh, before we just had this scratch workspace and we also had um, this space over here just for variables and so we've we've changed two things or we've added two things one is that we have this section down here at the bottom for printed output so this is anytime we call uh, print um, like here the output of that is we're going to put it down here so this is going to be it should look like exactly what will show up on the screen when you run this python program and then over here, instead of just having a, an area for variables, uh, we have the stack. So this is where Python remembers which functions are currently in the middle of running. Um, and it remembers the variables that belong to each function. So uh, as we call functions, we're going to put boxes here on the stack, kind of piling up to show what functions are currently executing. So you'll see that in, in a minute. So let's uh, let's start. So the first thing that happens, I mean, we define these functions, but they don't do anything yet. We've just defined them. So the first thing that actually happens is uh, we tell Python to run the function f with the argument 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box down here. Uh, actually, let's make this a different color. Um, so I'm going to make a box down here. And this is for the function, I will make it green. This is, whoops. Oh no. Okay. This is for the function f. Okay. Um, and uh, in class we talked about this metaphor of uh, reading some books that kind of pile up on the desk um, that stack up and so I'm gonna put the first things down the bottom and then kind of stack them up as we go um, but you know maybe you find that annoying because you start to start in the middle of the page and you don't know how much space you need so you could also if you want start at the top and go down um, it really doesn't matter that much as long as you're being consistent um, that you always put new things on one end or the other so uh, f, this function f has a parameter x, and so that really is the same as having a variable x inside this function. So I'm gonna, let's see. Um, so x is an int, and it equals, well, what does it equal? We called f with the argument 3, so this number 3 is going uh, into this parameter x. So it's really as if we made an assignment that said x is assigned the value 3. So that's what value this is going to have. All right, and every time we call a function, the first thing we do is we write down any parameters it has uh, and what values they have for that call of the function. Okay. So uh, what does f do? Well, the first thing it does is it calls another function g. So we need to make another uh, box on our stack. right? So f is kind of on pause now. Um, and we are going to make a function a little box for g here and well what parameters does g have it has a parameter called z so we need to put that here so z is also an int and what value does it have well uh, when f called the function g it said g and it gave it uh, an argument of x so we look up what's the current value of x. It's 3. And uh, so 3 is going to get copied into z. OK. So now we keep going with g. So the first thing that g does is uh, it computes the value of z times 3, and it assigns that to z. So I need to z times 3 is 9. And so we're going to cross out this old value of 3, and we're going to put in a value of 9. OK, and the next thing that happens is we make a new variable, q, and we assign it z plus 1, which is going to be 10. 
And of course, I could, you know, some of this I could write down in the scratch area if I wanted, um, just for the sake of making, oops, this video, I'm not going to do that. Um, but uh, you certainly could write down whatever you want. So we're going to make a variable q, which is also an int, and it's going to have the value 10, which is 9 plus 1. Okay, and then it says to print q, and so q has the value 10, so we're just going to print the number 10, uh, and so that's going to show up down here. So that would get printed on the screen. So now this function g is done. So what happens is uh, this box on the stack goes away. Okay, so we're just going to put a big giant x through it to show that it's not there anymore. Now, you know, ideally we would kind of erase it because it's really not there, but uh, if you're doing this on paper, that's obviously going to be uh, really annoying to erase the whole thing. Plus, it doesn't really show uh, what happened in the past. So we're just going to put a big x through it. Um, to show that that function is done, and also that those variables don't exist anymore. So remember, uh, the variables that are created inside of a function are local to that function. They only exist while that function is running, and as soon as the function is done, they disappear. Um, no one can access them anymore, and their values are gone. Okay, so uh, now we go back to f, because f is now the top thing on the stack. And so we resume where we, we paused. So we had paused right here. We called g of x. So that's now done. So now we're going to go on to this, and we're going to call g with the value x plus 2. Notice that x didn't change, right? Even though we, we passed x to g, we just, we just copied the value of x and gave that uh, to the function g. Um, and then g changed uh, its parameter z, but that didn't affect x at all. So uh, we're going to, let's see. Make another box for another call. Oops, let's make it a different color. Right, and every time we call a function, like we've called g twice now, but we get a separate box every time. Uh, you may not reuse the same box. That doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so we fill in its variable, its parameter z, which, uh, let's, and this is a different z than the last time g was called. So uh, what value does this have? Well, we called g with x plus 2 in, in the function f. So x has the value 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So this is going to be 5. Uh, then we multiply it by 3. So we're going to cross that out and we're going to put 15. And then we're going to make a variable q, which is an int and has the value 16. And we're going to print that. So we will print 16 down here. And now the function g is done. So again, we're going to cross that out. Okay, And then we go back to the thing currently on the top of the stack, which is f. And we pick up where we left off. And f, the only thing left to do is it prints the value of x is, and then whatever the value of x is, which is still 3. So the last thing that we're going to put down here is the value of x is 3. So that's what it should look like. So if we actually uh, run this, so indeed, this what we see here exactly matches what we put down here in the printed output. So uh, we've done it correctly. So that's uh, how you trace the execution of a Python program involving functions. Um, of course. Uh, on your homework, you'll be looking at slightly more complicated things with, um, you know, more than two layers of functions that call each other. Um, but the principle is the same. Every time you call a function, you make a new box for it on the stack, um, and each function gets its own variables. 
And when a function is done, you cross it out and you go back to whatever the thing currently on the top of the stack is and you pick up where you left off.